Hello everyone and welcome to A New Direction. My name is Jay Izzo and oh man, do we got another great show for you. <laughs> I say it every week. It's absolutely true. I get great guests. I get great books. Next thing you know, it's a great show. I can't help it. It's not me. It, I, I'd love to say it's me. It isn't me. It's the guests and it's the books. It's the, That's what makes the show. This week, uh, we are going to be talking to uh, Jeff G. Anya Cabo. Uh, the book is called The Space for Leadership. Well, hold on. Stop. Stop. Don't don't turn away, because the secondary title is going to get you. That's that's the hook. Listen to the secondary title. Lessons for who you can be, regardless of who you were. Let me repeat that again in case you missed it. Lessons for who you can be, regardless of who you were. Oh, we all have a past, folks. And our past can influence us today, but it doesn't have to. And uh, Jeff's got a story. It's powerful. And he is going to show us through his story and his uh, leadership, and we'll, t- we'll, we'll get into that later, uh, how he was able to take a situation in his childhood that carried forth in his adulthood and molded him into the leader he is today and that he could change to be uh, a tremendous leader, and you can too. That's the point of the book. You can too. But before we get to him, let's do what we do every week, right? We're four part people physical, mental, emotional, spiritual people. And folks, we got to be working on ourselves every day because the truth of the matter is if we're not growing, we are dying. And so we don't stay stagnant. So we have this thing. If you've never joined us here on TV, if you're watching us, DBTV, thanks for watching and listening, terrestrial radio from across the country. Thank you, podcast listeners. Love you. Appreciate you so much. Um, so here's what we do. Scale one to 10. One, this area of my life is ugh, 10. Siri can't get any better. So physically, what I'm asking you is, uh, how would you say when it comes to exercise, eating right, getting enough sleep, drinking enough water, five being average, what would you give yourself? Whatever the number is, don't be alarmed. Because this isn't about, you know, it go, well, I'm a, I'm a three. Well, it's okay. You know, I'm, we're not trying to go from a three to a 10. Let's get to a three to a 3.5, right? What can you do right now to change that, right? Could be anything, right? Take a walk, right? Get a little more exercise. You know what? Go to bed a little earlier. Put down the phone, right? Stop watching TV, right? Um, and maybe maybe you're one of those people who watches the news and before you go to bed and your mind is all racing. Stop it. Get your hand out of the bag of chips. Right. Stop. Do it. Do something different. See what I'm saying? Drink another glass of water. You know, hydrate yourself. All right. So that's how it works. So that's your first number. Second number is your mental intellectual number. Right. Listen, got to be an active participant in your learning and your growth. Great way to do that. Read a book. Perfect way to do it. This is a good one to read, by the way. Not all that long either, by the way. It's fast read. Right. But it's going to guess what it's going to do. It's going to help your intellectual growth. Right. You know, you want to grow in your knowledge, your understanding, and your wisdom, and what you do, and how you live. You got to be an active participant in that. So on a scale of one to 10, how would you say you're doing there? Second number. Third number, emotional. A lot has been written about the emotional self. D- Dr. Daniel Goleman has written a ton on emotional intelligence. All right, we break it down here real easy. One, how well are you able to control your emotions under stress and pressure? Mm, ever been hangry? And lose it. And then the second piece is how well are you able to tap into and understand the emotions of other people? Jeff is going to talk to us about having a shield of safety for the people around us as a leader. And I'm going to tell you that you cannot have a very strong shield if you cannot tap into and understand the emotions of other people where they have a safe place to tap into you back. Mm. So how would you say you're doing in that area? Third number. Fourth area is the spiritual area. Listen, I know there's people out there, you say, I'm not spiritual. And then there's plenty of you out there who go, well, I am spiritual. I believe in spiritual things, right? The fact is we are all spiritual beings. That, that's just, we all live by faith. Every day we get up, and you drink a cup of coffee, you believe that coffee's not poisonous, that's faith. Every time you push the key on your car 
and believe that it's going to start. That's faith. The plans that you make in the future that haven't happened yet, like that vacation, you have faith that that's going to happen. We all want to connect with something bigger than us. When we connect with each other, we don't connect with each other in just emotional, mental level. There is a spiritual connection that we can't explain that we connect with each other, right? And then what brings you back to to peace and joy in the midst of chaos? Is it God? Is it nature? Is it meditation? And some, or is it something else in your life? And I got to ask you, is it working for you? Because uh, the fact of the matter is, if it's not, then you need to change it. Right? So what would you give you a number in spiritual area? Those four numbers are like the tire, air in the tires of your car. Right? Uh, if the tire, one tire is too low, what happens? The car veers, hard steer, hard to move the car, right? If all four tires are too low, well, over the course of time, if you don't get enough air into those tires, you're going to ruin the car. Well, speaking of someone who's got the air in his tires to the right level, his name is Jeff Giannacavo. Uh, and uh, listen, from age seven, uh, he understood the power of a small business and the impact it has on those who own the business and the communities they live in. And after selling his first business at the age of 16 to buy a car, he's been on an epic entrepreneurial journey, journey ever since and is now a sought out consultant for business owners who desperately want to do life and business in their own terms. Jeff does business in your bedroom. Oh, wait. He co-owns a garden <laughs> mattress and more. Okay. It's the region's premier better sleep store. Uh, he's a driven entrepreneur. Uh, he, he's also got tremendous marketing skills and knowledge, and he's been featured in Forbes, Target Market, Dan Kennedy's, a no BS series of books and newsletters, Furniture Today, Sleep Savvy Magazine, list goes on and on, Success Magazine, uh, his passion is to unlock the potential of every business owner, shift them into the investor seat in their business and unlock the true joy and reward of business ownership so they can truly do life and business on their own terms and live what Jeff calls their very own big ticket life. So ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show and welcome to A New Direction for the first time. Jeff Giannacavo, welcome brother uh, to A New Direction. Jay, thank you so much. Uh, so happy to be here. You know, that... Uh... You know those four measurements in life. I mean, right there. I think I think people could listen to that first few minutes on repeat every day, <laughs> and uh, and gain value. And and really, if they're if they're truly being honest with themselves, um, just follow those four four metrics each day. You'll do a lot better. So, man, I'm happy to be here. What a great way to kick off our time together. Well, thank you. Yes, thank you for saying that. I it's been something that we did. When we first started the show, uh, I know have people say, well, just get on with the show. But I go, we got to check in. <laughs> so we have to do yeah, that. Yeah, that check in is good. That check -in uh, is good. Thank you. So let me let me just say this. Uh, this is what you say about the book. The book is about creating a space for healing. You say this book is about you taking the first step. You say this book is about you creating a space for others to step into and be around the space you created for healing. You say this book is about a focused expansion of that space you create. This book is about understanding that as a leader, the choices you make for those you lead matter. And this book is about healing others and through this process, healing yourself. And I think it's that last one, um, which by the way, the book accomplishes all those things. But I think it's the last one. This book is about healing others and through this process, healing yourself that uh, we're probably going to be most focused on because I don't. Tell me if I'm wrong here. I don't think as leaders, we pay attention to the hurts of our past that are affecting our leadership. Am I wrong there? No, I agree with that hundred percent. And I can, I can share an example of that from my own life. Uh, that's exactly that. If you, if you want. Sure. Yeah. Go. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it, it's actually a chapter in the book, new cuts don't equal old scars. And it's about the day I left. It was actually a Labor Day Monday holiday sales week in the retail business that I call on one of the few I have uh, businesses that is. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I end up flying out of our store parking lot in uh, Lancaster, Pennsylvania, which heading out of that store parking lot is not an easy turn. It was coming out of there about 60 miles an hour, Tokyo drift style. I was really upset. And I was really upset because we had a miscommunication in the company that, you know, through my ineffective leadership happened and I just blew up at it. I blew up at the people around me and it wasn't right. And really what that was is words, not meeting actions. And as we get into the book and we get into my story, that's going to really make sense where for me as a leader, 
when actions and words aren't meshed together, when they're not congruent, when they're not happening together, it's a real problem. I've come to learn I have to manage that. I have to understand that these new cuts aren't those old scars. These, these words not meeting actions aren't necessarily meant for me, not meant to hurt me. It's just what other people have going on. And the inaction was I was trying to put the wrong people in the wrong spot in the business as we were growing. So their words were, yeah, we want to do this. But deep down, they didn't want to be put into these new management spots. So the activity to work up to that just wasn't happening. The words were being said, but they just didn't want it. And I didn't realize I was putting the wrong people in the wrong spot. Fast forward all that without getting into too much detail, boring people. I end up flying out of our parking lot about 60 miles an hour, really upset, could have killed somebody, could have hurt myself uh, in a car accident and realize, wow, that that is something I have to address. I have to work on. I have to realize that just because in my past, actions not meaning words and words being said, and then actions not followed up off of those words doesn't mean today the people around me are here to hurt me. It means I just need to realize what I'm asking of them may not be what they ultimately want. And that's the uh, story of leaving the store 60 miles an hour on a Labor Day Monday. It was a pretty rough moment. And I think what, what a great place to start because I, I what I want to do, and I want to ease us into your story a little bit because I'm going to go back to chapter one, which is entitled The Way of the Suitcase. Mm -hmm. um, and you come to a realization that past trauma can't ever be shipped off and forgotten. I think that's an important right. point that you make. Yep. It doesn't ever go away. And all that you could do is manage it. And I, I think this is the thing with many of us in leadership is that what I think we do is we try to ignore it. We try to avoid it or we say it doesn't matter what happened in the past. And you give an analogy here that we carry this, carry this bag luggage with us mm -hmm. and we're a bunch of people crammed into a small space with our own bags limited by which. And every now and then, you know, we run into each other's suitcase and it pops open and it's not pretty. Yep. So help us understand this realization that past trauma can't ever be shipped off and forgotten. And yeah. because I think that's an important point for the leaders who are listening to the show. And I have many of them see sweet people and own business owners and entrepreneurs that you just can't ship it off. Help yep. us there. Yeah. So I think it's a good time to share, share what is my trauma? What is my past? If that's okay. Yeah. Great. Cool. Yeah. Let's do that. So, so I'm a, I'm a, I, I stand as a victor over the grave of my past childhood sexual abuse. It was very violent. It was frequent. Uh, it was something that lasted five years. It was something that transcended uh, a, uh, an international border moving from Canada as a child where I was born to the United States where I was a preteen and teenager. Um, it was awful. Uh, and for many years, I didn't know how to handle it. Um, I attempted to communicate that to others. There was a moment at time while the abuse was happening as a child where my abuser's spouse in a gathering of my family, their family, and another family, I believe, around Christmas time, my abuser was just pestering his daughter. And his wife says, is he molesting you? And those, this is that words and actions thing. When his wife said that in a room of five other adults that should have heard those words, because those are heavy words, mm -hmm. and then no action was taken. That to me was that like real deep rooted subconscious stuff where words and actions today really, really do bother me. Like just today, I, I stepped out to lunch to get a haircut. I wanted to look good for your show, Jay. Um, uh, you know, it was Valentine's Day, got a, got a card and some flowers for my wife and somebody butts in front of me in the self checkout line. And it was obvious that they felt more important. You know, it was, there was a, a the, the body language was there. I was acknowledged that I was in front of the line. And, you know, in that moment, you have a choice. You can, you can try to teach somebody or you can just let them be on their way because they have their own hurt. And, and dressing them down just really deep down is going to make them feel worse. Right. Right. And so it's one of those things as a leader, we have to pick and choose. And so for me, words and actions are so big. And that moment of not hearing the adults in the room address that statement was really really just damaging and it created it it began that suitcase right and some days that suitcase as i talk about in the book you know it, it is this big thing we carry around we do crash into one another 
we can't forget about it. Some days it's like a big old rucksack. Some days it's like a small little bag that's easy to handle, like a carry-on, like a real carry-on, not the big carry-on people try to jam in the <laughs> tester bin, and, right? It's not that one. Okay. Uh, but, but some days it is easy to carry and some days it's not. And as leaders, what we got to understand is maybe that's the space we have with our people, you know? Maybe, maybe our people through no fault of their own, no fault of your own as a leader, as somebody who hires people, you're assembling this motley crew of individuals that just has their own stuff going on in life. And if you're not creating a place where they can trust you, feel safe, empowered to excel as humans, and you're not focused on leveling up your humans, man, you just get people crashing into each other. They all like, you see them in the airport, right? You got, you got a back, a backpack on everybody. They're dragging a big old bag behind them. They got that third item. They're hoping the TSA agent and, and gate agent doesn't see, and you're just cramming all this stuff into one spot and it becomes a nightmare. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where my baggage comes from. I'm happy to talk about it as freely, as openly as I can. There is a faith component. If we want to touch on that, maybe a little later sure. we can. Sure. But, uh, but yeah, I'll turn it back to you. Um, okay, so so you you say, and, and so let's move into this leader space here in chapter one, because you say as leaders, we take up a ton of space with our presence, our ideas, our goals, our ambitions, yeah. what we want for others. And you say at times they don't want what we want for them and our dreams. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about that space, um, getting clarity on that space that we take up and how that space looks and how our past affects what kind of space we have to offer. Yep. I think the first thing is to acknowledge it's more, that space means more than just your own success. You got to, I said, be focused on leveling up the humans around you. We've all heard, you know, the fastest way to profit is your people, you know, people first there, there's, there's a million books and courses and, bits of information out there about that. But we first have to acknowledge that leveling up our humans is our responsibility as leaders. That whether you're somebody in a church, somebody coaching youth sports, uh, somebody with a business, it, it is our responsibility. You know, an example of that that I'll paint uh, is locally in, in where I live in our school. I have a son in, in 10th grade. Uh, the week, the day before Thanksgiving break, we had a, a fight that involved knives. And so that means one of those young men was shipped off, uh, thrown out of school. Likely, I've seen the video, so likely will, has caught a felony charge or two. And so imagine being the boss, of, imagine, I don't know the parents, but imagine those parents go to work that following Monday after Thanksgiving. What's their frame of mind? What's their hurt they're carrying? How, you know, that, that bag's big, lumpy, clunky that they're bringing into work now, right? Right. Have you created a space where they can come to you first thing that Monday morning after a holiday, we're in the holiday season, we're in the thankful, jovial mood. Have you created a space where they can come to you privately and say, Hey, this has happened. So I just want to be upfront with you that I'm likely going to need to make some private phone calls, take some time away to make phone calls in my vehicle. Uh, maybe have to miss a day or two for an appointment with an attorney, with a school, right. you know, or, or have you, are you the kind of leader where they just suffer in silence with that? Their work suffers, their presence suffers. There's no joy because their mind's elsewhere at home. They're now unsafe. Maybe they're operating a press or machinery in the field. You have to really think about that responsibility as a leader to really care. And it might not be something you think you signed up for, but if people, if humans are your path to profit, you absolutely have to own it. Otherwise, it's a really good time to be in business because the AI and the machines are right around the corner. <laughs> so you have to make a choice. Oh, that's good. Uh, his name is Jeff Giannacavo. Uh, the book is entitled The Space for Leadership. Uh, lessons for uh, who, who you can be regardless of who you are. Um, we're really just getting started. Um, but you, I'm telling you, you do not want to miss this book if you're a leader. So uh, we're going to you're listening to him here on New Direction. Hey, Epic Physical Therapy, whether you're recovering from an injury, surgery, suffering every day, every day, eggs and pains, having difficulty performing activities of daily living, uh, maybe a professional athlete, you just want to move and feel better and, and be better in your sport. Listen, the elite team at Epic Physical Therapy will provide you with a customized treatment plan for you. Uh, 
So when you're ready for your epic relief, your epic recovery, your epic results, don't look any further. Go to epicpt.com. That's E-P-I-C-P-T.com. And Linda Craft Team Realtors for 39 years, helping people transition in life. They go, wait, I thought you said they're a real estate company. Yes, they are. But think about it. Every place you've ever um, moved to or moved from has been a transition in life. And they know how to take the stress out of that particular situation of moving, right? Helping you find your new home, helping you leave your current home, right? And, And removing the stress pieces out of it, that part of it. So you know what? When you're ready to make your next life transition, whether you're selling a home or buying a home, start with Linda Craft and Team Realtors. That's lindacraft.com. That's L-I-N-D-A-C-R-A-F-T dot com. And we're back here on A New Direction with Jeff Gianyacavo. Uh, the book entitled um, The Space for Leadership, uh, Lessons for Who You Can Be Regardless of Who You Were. Um, and we're getting started here. Uh, Jeff, let's move on to chapter two because I think it's a great chapter. It's entitled The Broad Shoulders Meant to Carry Evil. You you start um, off this chapter by saying there are often repeated phrases in the leadership and personal development world. One is, uh, it happens for us, not to us. The story is inside the struggle and the journey is meant to be a struggle. Um, but we carry a burden of things from our past on our shoulders. We all do. Um, you become vulnerable enough to bring that out into the open. Help us understand as leaders uh, what those broad shoulders, what that means to you and your team carrying, having the broad shoulders to carry evil. Yeah, yeah. So before I go any further, I want I want everybody watching and listening, you know, wherever you may pick this up. And again, Jay is like an example of getting the content out there because where I say where you where you may listen or pick this up, it's like tens of thousands of places. So again, kudos to Jay and everything he's doing here on New Direction. Before I say this, you know, I I, I don't want to trauma away with people. Like whatever has affected you is your thing. And that's perfectly all right. You know, we don't have a responsibility for our past, but we do have a responsibility for ourselves and forward. Mm. Right. And so I stand here, I say I'm a victor over the grave of childhood sexual abuse. Maybe you're not quite there yet. Maybe you feel like that survivor. Maybe. Maybe you're that student that was really great at school and you got that B one time and your parents just came down on you like a pile of bricks and it just, you worked so hard and it was a project that pushed you out of your comfort zone and it just framed you in a different way. I'm not here. I don't want to have a contest with you. I don't want you to have a contest with me or anyone else you come across. So I just want to get that out first because I think as leaders, we need to understand that our life experiences aren't the experiences of those around us. Those shoulders we do have, they are meant to carry a lot, sometimes evil, as was given to me. As I say in the book, a lot of people say it doesn't happen to us, it happens for us. And this is where that faith component comes in. You know, so my abuser was pretty prolific. And, you know, it. there's not a lot that kind of triggers me anymore with this. I feel I've really done the work over the years. But I watched the movie, The Sound of Freedom. And in that movie, there was a scene in which there was a a perpetrator in his home and his library and his office. And there were all these videotapes. Well, my abuse happened mid 80s, late 80s. Video camera stuff wasn't prevalent. It wasn't readily available, certainly not to edit and have your own. And then there wasn't the internet and there weren't dark corners of the internet where you could go get this evil stuff. So my abuser, who has since passed, had to have had inroads into all this awfulness because that was the room where it was and where some of the abuse happened. And so when I say I was in the path of evil, I really was. And this is the faith component that might really put people sideways. And one of my coaches uh, has a phrase, she says, God will do no harm. And that's really hard phrase to hear. It's hard to hear if you've got a niece that died from childhood cancer. It's hard to hear if you have a spouse who was killed in a car accident. For me, it's the ultimate statement of faith. For me, I was put in this path of evil because I got the broad shoulders to carry it because two other young men didn't, and they ended up committing suicide. And when we take what's been created away, the brilliance we were put on this earth to have and share with others, 
that's rough. And so I feel I was put in this path to be here right now in this moment, sharing my story confidently that I can be a light and a beacon for others who've gone through the same evil and say, you don't, it doesn't have to end that way for you. It's not going to be easy, but it doesn't have to end that way for you. And that's really, to me, probably one of the biggest testaments of that broad shoulders to carry that evil that I could share is that I'm, I, I firmly believe through faith that this was my path. There was that something inside me that was seen that, okay, there's got to be somebody in the way of this evil person. Jeff can handle it. Mm. And that might hit people in a certain way. And I get it. I really can understand it. But I also don't believe we just go about this life in coincidences. I believe there's all a, a destiny to it all. You know, it's interesting that the one of the last statements you make in this chapter is, now more than ever is the time of authentic, vulnerable, and powerful leadership that you can create by leading with a shield, a shield for those around you that you hold above all gathered within your space. Um, and I, that, that's it's interesting that that's, that that authenticity, that vulnerability, and you see this connection that you, you make this connection spiritually, mentally, emotionally, physically even, um, that you make this connection from your past to your current self and see it as not as something that, yes, it was horrible, but something that also uh, created so much good for others for them and for yourself. Yep. Mm -hmm. that, that's a hard transition for people. It to is. See, to see the good, you know, to go, okay, I've come on the other side of it now. I can see the good in it. I could see, I could see a purpose in it. I could see that, okay, you know, that I am able to now be a light you know, where I'm, I would not have been that light had yeah. those things not happened to me. Yep. You know, and, and I, yeah, go ahead. That's the power within every situation. If you choose to see it and accept it that way. Mm. Yeah. And as a leader, if you say you're a leader and you exude leadership capabilities, and abilities then lean into them so they're existent so they exist I'm sorry they exist all the time because those that don't quite see it they need you the most that's what i mean by like being authentic right you know it, it, it's really about living that out um you know i had a moment at my retail business this, earlier this week and must have been i'm gonna i'm literally gonna go review the tape because there must have been something in my body language that was a negative feedback to my team about how they're going to manage the warehouse. And largely I stay out of, I stay out of that. They tell me, Hey, I need this tool. You know, we've expanded our business. And so we've added some extra storage capabilities about my extent of being involved is going and buying that stuff and getting the permit from the city to do it and place it down. Right. That's it. And there must've been something in my body language because I don't feel it was my words. You could tell. I immediately saw it. They were hurt by that because I've always said, bring me the answer, not a problem. Take initiative. If we stumble, just let's discuss how we thought we'd succeed. So there must have been something in my body language that threw back a negative feedback. So I'll go back to the tape tomorrow when I'm there and look at it. But as a leader, we have to be tuned into our people and our abilities and capabilities to accept this and really own it is to me just paramount. It's some of the, some of the best work I think leaders can be doing right now because we got a hurt world. Oh God. Yeah. Yeah, we do. Um, moving on to, we're going to, we're going to go to chapter three here. Um, mm -hmm. defining the leader shield, uh, because this is important because you start off by saying as a leader, you need both the shield and the sword. And I think oftentimes in leadership, we, have a sword <laughs> more than a shield because we don't think the shield is very beneficial because we think the shield is defense, but you yep. have a different view of the shield and what that means and the sword and the damage that it can do help us understand that. 
Yeah, I mean, I try to paint some good visuals in the book. I'll give another one. If you think of like any like kind of Viking type movie, you know, Vikings gathered together. They had the shield wall. They had a shield. They had a sword. The shield was wider than their sword as far as reach goes. You know, they could they could throw that arm out with a shield on the arm and strike somebody with the shield at the same time, protect themselves, come together to protect one another, use that shield as an advantage to stop a strike. Just kind of like it, it is this tool to create space to win. And yeah, we can have a sword. And listen, I, I at times get the sword out and use it, but I much prefer creating this space. And that space comes from that shield. And if another visual, and I, I believe, it, it, well, it is in the book, you know, this any kind of heroic journey uh, in battle in a movie, if there's swords and shields involved, it's almost always that sword clanging against the shield. The mo music hits a crescendo. The fast movement action of the camera stops and it pauses. And what happens? It transitions to success for the hero in the story. And so, again, I just really try to go about my day, you know, going back to the grocery store example this morning, I could have got out the sword with my tongue and just lashed out, but instead I just kind of let it go. Cause I don't really know what's going on. Maybe, maybe that person was going to take care of an elderly parent. Sure. And maybe that elderly parent was up against the clock to get food in their belly, to take a prescription. And so extending some grace in that moment, that's space, that's the shield as opposed to a sword, just as a little example. Um, that th I would just, you know, I don't want to spend a lot of time on it, but th just think about that. Think about the tools that you can use as a leader and which ones do you get out? I'd much rather get my shield out with my people, with my customers, with my partners than the sword. Mm. Yeah. Because, uh, you say this, the damaged person you think exists only is only in your mind, the sword you carry and the cuts you've made to get to this point likely have had diminished return over the years, which I think is so powerful and in later you move on here to the principle about practicing a mindset of abundance and i think this is a really important little subtle thing that you talk about in terms of success and and is the principle of abundance talk to us about the mindset of abundance and how that fits in yeah i mean there's you know i often tell people money's not a problem you know i jokingly like we print more of that stuff every day <laughs> I mean, literally we do now, right, right, right. I don't say that ignorantly to know that in doing so we devalue it at the same time. However, the principle stands, I mean, yeah, I just got last week I was in Guatemala visiting my father who's retired there and my aunt and uncle who have been doing medical mission work and they have a medical clinic for 28 years or I'm sorry, 26 years since hurricane Mitch wiped out the nation mm -hmm. in 1998. I mean, where we live, largely where you'll see this show, and again, Jay's done a great job getting it all over the place. It's largely broadcasting into places of abundance because they don't have a lot of cable TV in the mountains of San Rafael Adoro, Guatemala. In fact, they don't even have Spanish. They have Quechacal, which is an old Mayan language. There's, there's very little abundance there. The, the amount of abundance there that extends is about a period of 24 to maybe 48 hours because everything they do today provides food and shelter for tomorrow. And, and then it's repeat the next day and the next day. And so if you wake up and there's food in your fridge for the week, you have abundance. If you wake up, you can flick the light switch on, there's abundance. If you can do a show like this and you have internet that can broadcast with great quality, TV quality, you have abundance. We just forget that. And we forget that living in abundance means maybe helping our competitor out. You know, I'm friendly with our local competitors. I do a podcast show for my retail business. We had a local competitor on our show because I don't sell sofas. I don't sell kitchen tables. But if my customers are going to go get that stuff, I want them to go to somebody I trust. And yeah, they sell what we sell, but we'll let those chips fall on the table where they may. We'll earn that business from our community because they know, like going to a steakhouse, when you really want a good steak, you go to a steakhouse and you don't order the chicken from there. <laughs> From us, if you want a really great sleep and you want to wake up happy, you'll come to my business and you'll go get your furniture over there. Right. And, you know, we've had other competitors come in and, and I share all of our information with the industry so much so that that practice of abundance and giving back birthed an entire other company that just works. 
And now that company with technology tools that we have today is going to grow and grow. And I'm, I'm on a mission to create income without borders. I told my uncle, I could show you the text right now on my phone. Hey, there was a spark that was lit, a fire that was lit on that trip last week. I don't know quite what it means yet, but I felt something. You can go to my social media last week and you can see a little picture of three girls against an Adobe brick wall and they're just smiling away. Mm -hmm. They don't live in abundance. You know, I don't know if they had shoes on their feet, but likely one out of the three didn't. And trust me, you want shoes on your feet in, the, in that mountain village. Sure. And yet they had a big smile, bigger smile than some smiles, that bigger smile on their face than yeah. versus people I see around me here in America. So abundance, it, it's, it's I wanna, gratefulness. I'm going to stop you there for a second. And this is where, this is where Maslow was wrong. Because those people don't have much of anything, and yet they're more self-actualized than we are. Mm -hmm. Right? You know, you know, Maslow would say, you know, you got to go through the physical, you got to have all this stuff and your self-esteem and your love and caring and belonging, and you have to go through all this pyramid to get to be self-actualized. And those people have none of it, and yet they would still give you the shirt off their back. And they will yep. accept anybody that comes into their space. Mm -hmm. Isn't that amazing? We have, we have all this stuff, right? We, I mean, think about it, Jeff. You and I have got it out. We, we, we've got all this stuff. And, and yet they're more self-actualized probably than we are. Yeah, yeah. I'll give, I'll give everybody a real good little exercise because I'm, I'm starting to live through it and go through it now. My wife and I, our plan in the next few years is to get on the road in our RV. We have a son who will be playing college football. We want to get to his games, not to be helicopter parents, but we want to go see him and we want to see our nation. We want to see our country and travel. And it's a great way to mix it all. It's why income without borders is, is in my focus right now. But when you think, and, and here's the exercise. If you had to cram into a 28 foot class C mobile RV or a, even a 48 foot toy hauler with a dually pickup truck, from your four bedroom, three bath home, you know, 3,500 square feet that I live in, you know, and all the stuff we've accumulated over 15 years. This is the exercise. Really begin to think what you cut. Really begin to think what do you truly need right. to be happy each day? Yeah. 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 You know, and if you and if you don't know what any of that looks like, just Google the floor plan. For a 28 foot class C motor home or a 48 foot bumper tow car or a 48 foot car hauler camp trailer, you know, or anything you might visualize yourself in or, or a one bedroom tiny house is about the same square footage or a studio right. apartment. Yeah. You know, you'll, you'll quickly realize you don't need a lot of stuff. Mm. That's it's, it's really, it's really true. I, I read somewhere or I listened somewhere to one of the shark guy, shark people who do the shark tank. They said that, uh, we only wear about 20% of the clothes that we have. Yep. Only about 20%. And we go through your closet, right? And look through your closet and recognize that you only wear about 20% of the clothes that you own. That's pretty crazy. Yep. Because I don't need Meanwhile. Need yeah. Yeah. Meanwhile, you've got people in this world um, that have no choice but to wear one thing every day. Yeah. Yeah. And when that one thing wears out, they got to trade something because they might not have the skills to make it. And this is literally the case that I witnessed last week. They have to trade, you know, a day's worth of labor in the field of firewood, hunting and like gathering firewood. Imagine living in a society where as a grandparent, when you're no longer productive, your family just doesn't give you food. Right. And you starve to death eat today what you kill today mentality. And that happens. And there's still a lot of happiness, right. but there's also a lot of reality that goes with it. And I witnessed that last week. And so, yeah, abundance is important and we have to be grateful for what we have. And that practice of gratitude is just going to lead to far more abundance than you could even, even imagine. That's awesome. His name is Jeff Gian Yacavo. The book entitled The Space for Leadership, Lessons for Who You Can Be Regardless of Who You Were. Uh, you're listening to him here on A New Direction. Uh, folks, I talk about Epic Physical Therapy, my physical therapist. I think they should be yours too, by the way. Um, 
listen, uh, professional athletes work with them. They offer the most top of the line equipment, including the Alter G anti gravity treadmill, the Normatech compression sleeves, the Game Ready, which is my favorite. Um, that's ice, water, and compression all at the same time. They're trained and certified in the most comprehensive cutting edge stray treatments available, like blood flow restriction therapy, dry needling, cupping, just a few. When you're ready for your epic relief, your epic recovery, your epic results, don't look any further. Go to epicpt.com. It's E P I C P T.com. And Linda Craft Team Realtors, uh, listen, they're located in Raleigh, North Carolina, part of the Greater Research Triangle Park. <clears throat> and right now, they are uh, looking to bring on more qualified real estate professionals. If you're in the area or you're thinking of moving to the area and you have your real estate broker's license or you're about to get it, you know what? Contact Linda Craft Team. And it, it just go to lindacraft.com. And, and, or you can go and you can, you can look at, you know, you know, be part of the team. They're looking for someone maybe just like you, uh, to be part of their team that helps people transition all over in life. So, uh, if you've got a real estate license and you're ready to make that transition in your life to a new real estate team, check out Linda Craft Team Realtors. That's lindacraft.com, L-I-N-D-A-C-R-A-F-T dot com. And we're back here on a new direction uh, with my friend Jeff Gianyakavo, um, space for leadership. Um, I did not have any idea that that's where we were going to go with our discussion last segment, but it was awesome. I, I really enjoyed it. I, I'm going to jump us over to chapter six, uh, which is finding the purpose <laughs> of your business and yourself. And I don't know, maybe maybe you'll you'll tell me we should really focus in on the, uh, the previous chapter of five of leaders need to realize their true position. Um, but help us understand, I, I, what do you think? Do you want to move? Do you want to go to finding your true position? You want to go to finding purpose for your business or yourself? Let's do purpose. Yeah, I think so too. I, I, I'm glad you said that. All right. So, uh, a company without a purpose supported by a mission reinforced with values is rudderless. <laughs> That's what you said, uh, in the mm -hmm. book, uh, help us understand, um, uh, purpose in business and for you, your business and yourself. Cause I talk a lot about purpose. So I loved what you had to say. Yeah. I mean, I think it's easy to, you know, go on Amazon or, you know, some website where the corporate art is and find a cool picture, uh, and a slogan and be like, I jive with that statement. That's our purpose. Right. right? But to me, our purpose, so I'll, I'll paint it through the lens of my retail business. Um, uh, and because it's, it's something that has impact. You know, people say, why do you sell mattresses? I'm like, you know, I didn't really destined to be here. I was not like I'm a second, third, fourth generation mattress guy. I'm just kind of got into this business, stumbled into it, but I like it because all of my creative skills to take a commodity product into an experience I get to use. Right. And that's where the passion comes from. But the purpose in our business is to help people in our neighborhood, wake up happy, be productive. Cause God forbid you say something negative to your wife this morning because you slept terribly and you've been sleeping terribly and then something happens on the way to work or you mouth off, you know, you, your kids mouth off to you, you mouth off to them and it just, they go to school and now it perpetuates that bad grade project, which brings us all the way back to where we began and you come back on them later in the day. We know that sleep is that third leg in the stool of a well-lived life, diet, exercise, and sleep. There's tons of diet and exercise gurus, but we're taking that, we're taking that mission up to be that third leg in our community. We're going to be five mile famous for it. And, and so our purpose is to truly help our community wake up happy, be pain free as they can as a result of what we sell and have them be more productive. That's our purpose. None of the, none of that involves selling white rectangles at a cheap price today, buy it today because the sale ends today, which is all a lie. You know it, I know it, but we all say it and agree to it. It's silly. We want to help you just wake up happy. And, you know, we get there, you know, our values, there's a number of them, but you can test a lot of our values through our book, Sleep Better. We wrote the book. It's kind of like a guidepost, if you will. It keeps us honest. Not that we need it, but it's just like a little catchphrase. You know, and then, you know, I mean, our mission is to change the way you feel about mattress stores because we don't, the industry at large doesn't have a good reputation. You know, um, part of what I said uh, my business infotail in income without borders. That's where that business operates. And, you know, we're actually working to create things to help people 
support that mission of changing the way the community, the public feels about mattress stores. Cause it's not a good feeling. It's like right there with used car salesmen, you know? So you gotta be really clear on this stuff. I mean, I think in the book, it's, it's, I get, kind of give a detailed breakdown through our mission, our values, I'm sorry, yeah. our values, our mission and our purpose. And you can kind of work up and down the ladder with them. And, you know, your values are that foundation. It brings forth the cladding of the mission. And then the purpose is kind of like, it's that peak. It's that beautiful snapshot from the curb that everybody gets. You know, this is a great park. This is a great house. This is a beautiful lake. You know, it's a real clear vision of, of what they're going to get by looking in at your business. Right. You, 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 there's a couple of things about purpose here. I think one is um, it needs to be clear to everybody mm -hmm. that, and, and, and here's the other thing that you say, it, it needs to drive you at a very high level. It's not something that drives you today and only today. Right. It's something that is lasting that, that completely outlasts it all. It, it can't, it, it can't be a one-time passion or desire. It is something that is meaningful uh, to you and in, and makes a positive impact on the community around you. Yep. Uh, that's the purpose. I, I have always saw the mission as being how I carry out my purpose. So here's my purpose, right? It, that this is the, this is the purpose. Th now I can have different missions to, to carry out that purpose. Yep. And then those, my values are reflected throughout that because it guides every decision that I make within the mission yeah. and my purpose. That's kind of how I've seen it. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, I, you know, uh, you said purpose isn't something you do daily. To me, that's what the values are. Right. 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 Like, so your yeah. value stack are your daily actions. Right. You know, like here, here's an example. Um, you know, one of our values circles around integrity. Integrity is what you do when no one's looking. My grandfather was a master cabinet maker. He's a guy that could have given you OSB cabinets, made them look solid wood, and you would have never known until you had a fire or water damage in your house. And then he told me, he's like, my reputation will be nothing. I'm not going to risk it for anybody. Right. And he said, integrity is what you do when no one's looking. Mm -hmm. And and so an example of that is we, we in the month of February, um, coming off of January, we weren't, we weren't thrilled with. We added a, we pay your sales tax discount opportunity to blend in with some other ones, you know, and it, it fits certain people. It's a good headline, but here's what we did. We had one customer recently that had yet to be delivered that bought a very nice massage chair from us, about $9,000 massage chair, like just change your life. Incredible. Right. If you got this in your living room, I have one downstairs. They're incredible. And, you know, so 6% on nine grand does a lot of money. It's about, you know, what, what's eight times, uh, What's, what's, I'm sorry, what's nine times six, 54, $540. Yeah, okay. Right. So we called this person back and said, Hey, we're reducing your balance, a little balance owed before we delivered. We're reducing your balance because we just launched this promotion. You're yet to be delivered. Jeff was thinking of this as you bought, it was already in the works as you bought. The elation that came through from that customer, I was told, was incredible. Hmm. Now they'd already bought from us, they're already a repeat customer. We could have chosen. Maybe they won't, maybe they won't figure it out. Maybe they won't see the ad. Maybe they won't go back to our website. Maybe, maybe, maybe. But like my grandfather said, what if there is a water damage? I can't control. I right. can't control where that person looks, what they see, what, what gets said to them. What if they referred to us and say, Hey, thanks so much for sending me to those guys. They had a great deal. We paid, they paid my sales tax and everything. And he's still looking at his invoice, 540 bucks to the state of PA. And by the way, I hate taxes. Um, but he's like, what the heck? Those guys didn't offer that to me. And, and this is where you really like that. Our mission changed the way you feel about mattress stores. Had we not done that, had we been found out, how would that person have felt? Right. Right. And, and so it, it, again, as a leader, we face a lot of tough decisions every day. And when we go to sleep at night, we got to say, are we okay with ourselves? hundred percent. Are we okay with how we acted today? Yeah. And did we level up everybody around us and that experience around us? Let's move to chapter seven, shifting from success to significance. Uh, help us as a leader. Uh, you say as a leader, as your success grows, the same tools which brought you to one level of success have been uh, have limiting returns to 
so that you can't reach the next level. Help us understand uh, shifting that yeah. from success to significance. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I feel I could go anywhere in this country, open up a business, do business and be okay, be fine, support my family. What am I doing for the community? What am I doing for the community of people that support that business? You know, last year we took enough people to sleep on about $35,000 worth of mattresses and put them on a bed. We helped a kid who a teacher nominated him, said his kid's struggling to stay awake. I come to find out he's sleeping on the floor. We get a picture of the mattress we delivered to him. And in the corner, there's black mold on the floor. You can see in the ceiling, there's water damage in the ceiling and the wall coming out. This kid's sleeping in black mold in Lancaster City, Pennsylvania, which is not like a poor, poor city by any stretch. Significance to me is how, you know, what are you giving back to your community that supports you? You know, how are you giving back? You know, I said about this fire that was lit down in Guatemala. I don't yet know what it means, but I know it's going to be significant. You know, my aunt and uncle have been doing work down there now where children that first came into their bus that has evolved into the 28, 2,500 square foot clinic they have now have children. Their marriage is more stable than their parents had. Their kids are more healthier than they were. That's significance. That's the kind of stuff I want to attach to in life. And, you know, so being successful just for the sake of success. Yes, it's good to live in a nice house, drive nice cars, have a good bank account. It's all important and part of it. But if you go back to the abundance side of things, that abundance creates that ability to create significance for those you sell to, those you, you, you sell into, the community you provide for. What do you do so that's stable, so your business can always remain? Those are the things I look at as significance. That's awesome. Um, we're, we're down to our last couple of minutes here. Uh, transitioning from you know the, the, the subtitle lessons for who you can be regardless of who you were. If you were to drop a final 30 seconds to a minute thought on that, yeah. what would that be for you? Yeah, I mean, look, I think if you take a young boy sexually abused for five years across two, you know, across an international border, uh, abused while having happy birthday sung to him, parents divorced, and then terrible father figure brought into the house who eventually ended up dying from a methamphetamine overdose. I don't think anybody would fault me for being a terrible piece of garbage human being. I wasn't set up for success right? There was a lot going on that would allow me to um, not be the person I am. And so when you, um, you know, when you think about your opportunity to go forward, you shouldn't have to be responsible for that past, but you need to be responsible for your future and for your forward. And I guess I learned that early. I, th I think the saving grace was my maternal grandparents. Um, I'm grateful to have had that. And I was able to hold on to that long enough, far enough to bring me to where I am today. That's awesome. Uh, his name is Jeff Gian Nakavo, the book, the space for leadership. Jeff, how can people get a hold of you uh, if they would like? Yeah, to make, yeah, make it real simple. Uh, you could obviously search it on Amazon, but if you want, uh, to get my book and let me know you got my book, either through Amazon or my page, you go to the slash book, thejeffg.com slash book. There's some bonuses on there. Uh, I, if you want an autographed copy, I'll be happy to mail you one. There's a button to do that there too, thejeffg.com slash book. I'm going to put that on the write-up on the blog post. Wonderful. Uh, people as well. So they'll be able to uh, be able to do that for you. Jeff, stay with me. Thank you so much. Folks, it's the show you know I say to you every week. You're in control of three things in your life, your attitude, your effort, and your resiliency. This show was an absolute uh, example of that. You know what? Life is not going to always give you what you want. You're going to get struck. You're going to get hit in the mouth. There's going to be times when your circumstances are out of your control, but you can control your attitude. You control your effort. How excellent will you be today? And yes, you will get knocked down, but it's up to you to get back up. Make those choices because they are within your control. I'll be back next week with another great guest. It's going to be another great book. It's going to be another great show. It has to be. As I say to you all over the world, you know what? You have a lot of choices. You chose us. Thank you. 
Give us a positive review wherever you're listening to us at. Give us a thumbs up on YouTube. As I say to you all over, you know what that is. Ciao, everybody.